So in this video, I'm going to go over the quiz two practice, which was handed out um, in class today. So first question says, given an equation of a line, find the equation of the line that is parallel and perpendicular through the given point. So the very first thing we must do is find the slope of the line that's given. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, 8x plus 2y equals 24. And what we want to do is get y by itself. Get y by itself. That's going to be your first step, okay? So to do that, I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. So now 8x is gone from then I have 2y equals negative 8x plus 24. Then I'm going to divide both sides by my 2 because remember we're doing opposite operations. The 2 is being multiplied by the y. So we're going to divide it to get rid of it. So we're going to divide it. We're going to divide it. And look, I don't really even care about the y-intercept because this is asking us about parallel and perpendicular. So um, all I want is the slope. So my equation is going to be y is equal to, because the 2's cancel each other out, negative 4x plus 12. So once again, the only part of this I really need is that right there because that's my m, right? So for this equation, m is equal to negative 4. So the parallel slope then would be negative 4, right? The perpendicular slope would be the change the sign and flip it. So the m here is going to be positive 1 fourth, okay? Now when we plug in, we're going to use the equation y equals mx plus b y equals mx plus b, and we're going to plug in y, m, and x and solve for b. So we need to know that this is my x and that's my y because we're given a point, right? So what is y? It's 3. What is my m in this problem? It's negative 4, right? And then my x is the 4 right there. Got it? And then we're going to add the b because that's what we're going to solve for. So we got 3 equals negative 4 times 4 is negative 16 plus b. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. So this is going to be 19, right? Equals b. Okay, then what do we do? Then we substitute in our m and our b into the equation y equals mx plus b and that gives us the equation for the line. So y is equal to negative 4x plus 19. Now the only difference between the problem we just did for parallel and perpendicular is slope. That's the only difference, okay? So once again, we're going to plug in our y, we're going to plug in our slope, which is now 1 fourth, we're going to multiply that by our x, which is 4, plus our b. 1 fourth of 4 is 1, so this is going to be 1 plus b. The way we get rid of that positive 1 is to subtract it. So b is equal to 2. So once again, what are we plugging in? We're plugging in our m and our b in the equation y equals mx plus b. So y is equal to 1 fourth x plus 2. Okay, we're going to do the same process down here for the next one, okay? So once again, I'm going to write the equation. Actually, I'm just going to use the equation that's here, and I'm going to subtract, I'm going to add 8x to both sides. So that's going to give me 6y equals 8x plus 48. I'm going to divide both sides by my 6. Divide that by 6, divide that by 6. So that's going to give me y equals 8 over 6x plus 8, right? Again, notice we have our 8 over 6 right here. That's our m, right? So we're going to reduce that. You can do that in a calculator, or you can know that both are divisible by 2. So m here is going to be 4 thirds, right? So once again, my parallel slope is going to be m is equal to 4 thirds. My perpendicular slope, we're going to change the sign. So it's going to be negative, and we're going to flip it 3 fourths. So on this particular problem, there's my x, there's my y, OK? So here again, we're going y equals our m 4 thirds times our 24, which is our x, and plus b. So 4 thirds of 24 is 32. So 7 is equal to 32. You can do that right in your calculator by, by doing, uh, in parentheses, 4 divided by 3 times 24, okay? So then we're going to subtract the 32 from both sides, aren't we? So this is going to be 25 equals b. And what are we plugging back in again? We're plugging in our m and our b, right? Sorry, that's a negative 25, isn't it? It is. Okay, so let me go back and write that so you guys can see it. Because we subtracted the 39 from both sides, didn't we? 
So this B would be negative 25. So once again, we're going to plug them in. So Y is equal to our 4 thirds X minus 25. So said it before, same process, right? So if we're doing the same process, we got 7 for our Y is equal to negative 3 fourths times our 24 plus our B. Multiply negative 3 fourths. We know this is going to be a negative term, right? Because a negative times the positive is negative. So that's going to be negative 18, isn't it? Plus B. So this time, aren't we going to add the 18 to both sides? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a positive 25 this time, right? So once again, what are we plugging in? Our M and our B in the equation is Y equals negative 3 fourths X plus 25. Third time, same process, right? So this time, notice that the 4X is by itself already. So we can just divide by negative 12, divide by negative 12, right? I don't have to move anything this time. I can just divide both sides by negative 12 because I'm just trying to get the slope. So what is a negative divided by a negative? A positive, right? So slope here is going to be, it says 4 twelfths, right? Negative, negative, negative. So that reduces to be 1 third. So M equals 1 third here. So that means my perpendicular M is going to be negative 3, isn't it? Okay. So now, here again, that's my x, that's my y. We're using the equation y equals mx plus b. So we got 4 equals 1 third of 6 plus b. Take 1 third of 6 in your calculator and you get 4 equals 2 plus b. We subtract the 2 from both sides. So b is equal to 2. And again, what is my m? What is my b? y is equal to 1 third x plus 2. Same process again that we just did. So we got our 4 equals, this time, negative 3 times 6 plus b, right? So that's 4 equals negative 18 plus b. How do we get rid of a negative 18? We add 18, right? So we're going to add 18 to both sides. So b is going to be equal to 22. Once again, plugging in m and b in the equation, y equals negative 3x plus 22. All right, so we're still going to put the equations in y equals mx plus p format, right? So y is going to be on one side, and um, the x and the uh, b are going to be on the other side, right? So y equals mx plus b. Uh, no, remember that when we're talking about parallel, the slopes are equal. When we're talking about perpendicular, the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So if one is positive, the other one's negative. So what we're going to do first with this first one is we're going to move the 12y. Actually, no, take that back. We're going to move the 6x. Help me, plus 6x, plus 6x. So this is going to be 12y equals 6x plus 48. We're going to divide both sides by the 12, right? And we could divide it all by 12. So that goes away from there. That's y is equal to 1 half x plus 4. And I don't really care about the 4. I only care about the 1 half, right? Okay. So, m for this first one was 1 half. m is equal to 1 half. So we're going to compare that with the other one. Okay, so again, I'm going to move the x. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. This is going to be 2y equals negative x plus 4. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, so no, there's a 1 up there, right? So what is our slope here? m here is equal to negative 1 half. So let's compare these slopes. We got 1 half, and we have negative 1 half, so isn't this going to be neither? One's positive, one's negative, but they are the same, the same numbers, 1 over 2, right? They have to flip for it to be perpendicular. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the next one. So we're going to subtract, we're going to add 21x, add 21x. So this is going to be 7y equals 21x plus 14, divide everything by 7. So this is going to be y equals 3x plus 2, right? So here, m is equal to 3, right? Now let's check the other one. So again, subtract 2x, subtract 2x. So this is going to be 6y equals negative 2x plus 18. Divide everything by 6. 
by 6 by 6. You can figure out what that is reduced in the calculator, right? So m is equal to negative 1 third. So once again, let's look at these slopes, 3 and negative 1 third. So those are, one's positive, one's negative, and they are reciprocals of each other. So these are perpendicular. Okay, you can keep going. Okay, so here we go again. We are going to uh, subtract 2x from both sides. 8y equals negative 2x minus 12. Divide by 8, divide by 8, divide by 8. Again, what do we really care about? We care about this thing right here, right? So what is that reduced to be? m equals negative 1 fourth, okay? So let's compare that with the slope of the other one, okay? So here again, we're going to subtract the 5x, subtract the 5x. So that gives us negative 20y equals negative 5x plus 30. Divide both sides by what? Our negative 20, our negative 20, our negative 20. Again, all I care about is the slope. So where do we find that from? Right here. Y'all see that? So a negative divided by a negative was what? So this slope is going to be positive 1 fourth. So once again, isn't this a neither? It is. Neither, neither, however you say it, okay? I right, got one more. So this time again, we're going to add the 7x to both sides. That gives us 35y equals 7x plus 70. I'm going to pull it up some. And I'm going to divide by 35, divide by 35, divide by 35, so this is going to be y equals 1 fifth, 7 goes into 35 five times, x, and that would be plus 2, right? So my slope here was 1 fifth. Okay, let's check the other one. We're going to subtract the 9x from both sides. So this is going to be negative 45y equals negative 9x plus 10. Divide both by what? Negative 45 negative 45, negative 45. Again, what do I care about? That right there, right? A negative divided by a negative is what? How many times does 9 go into 45? Five times, right? So m here is equal to 1 fifth again. So what can we say about these two slopes? They are parallel, right? P-A-R-A-L-L-E-L. -L -L. Okay, so the next one says what is the midpoint of AB and what is the midpoint of, a of CD? So the Let's look at point A. Point A is between there, right? So isn't this going to be 3.5, negative 3.5, comma, and our y value up here is 4, right? And B down here is going to be negative 3, 0, right? So aren't we going to add our x's together? So we're going to go negative 3.5 minus 3 divided by 2. That's my x value. And then we're going to do 4 plus 0 divided by 2. So that's going to be negative 6.5 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2. So isn't that going to give me negative 3.25 comma 2. That's my midpoint of AB. All right, now we're going to talk about CD. I'm just going to put it down here so we know that we're doing a different value. So C is the point 2 comma 1, right? And D is the point 1 and again, we're between 4 and 5 right up here, so this is 4.5, so that's point D, okay? So here again, we're going to add 2 plus 1 divided by 2, and we're going to do 4.5 plus 1 divided by 2. So when I do that, I got 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5, right? And then I got 5.5 divided by 2, and that would be 250 and 25 cents, right? Which is 2.75. Okay, that's the midpoint of CD. All right, the next one says determine if the triangle with the vertices R01, S233. Let's go ahead and plot these points. 01 is R right there. Um, S is 33. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that segment. And then T is 50. Okay, so my question for you is, where would you predict the right angle is? I would say probably S, right? Can you tell that at R here and at here, those look like acute angles, don't they? Okay, so let's see. And the way we prove that is that the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other, right? So let's count RS. Let's look at the slope of RS. 
So we're going to go up 1, 2, so that's the rise of 2, 1, 2, 3, run of 3. So now if our S is perpendicular to TS, then what do we know? That there's a right angle at S, right? Okay, so here we go. Can you guys tell that that's falling from left to right? It is, so that's negative, and we're just going to count 1, 1, 2, 3 down, right, over 1, 2, right. So what do you notice? They're negative reciprocals of each other, right? So we can say RS is perpendicular to TS, right? And that means that the right angle is where? At the point that's repeated, which is S, right there, okay? All right, so this next one says, given three points of a quadrilateral, find the fourth point that would complete the specific quadrilateral, okay? So we're going to plot these points again. 1, negative 5 is right down there. That's going to be my A. B is at negative 2, 1 right there, B. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that side. And then we've got C at 2, 3 right there is C. Now, this is a rectangle. Y'all see it says that? That means opposite sides are parallel, right? So doesn't that mean we can use the slopes? It does. So let's just talk about the slope from B to C. So the slope from B to C, we're going to go up 1, 2, up, two, we're talking slope here, because we're going to use the slope. And then over to the right, one, two, three, four. So right four. So that's what we're going to do from A. Go up one, two, and over one, two, three, four. Now it wouldn't make sense for me to have gone from C, right? Because I already went from C. So there we see, there's our A, what we think is D. Now we're going to check it. So we're going to check it with the slope of BA. So we're going to count here. So we're going to talk about the slope from B to A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that was 6 down, right, and 1, 2, 3, right, 3, right. So we're going to do the same thing from point C to make sure. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down, 1, 2, 3, right. Hmm, look at that, got the same point, didn't we, D. So what is D? It's 5 comma negative 3. So you're using the slope to find these, okay? So let's do this other one, 2, 6. Right here is W. Negative 3, positive 4 right there. That's X. So we're going from W to X. And then we got Y at negative 5, negative 1 right there. So that's my Y. And we're looking for Z, right? Okay, so let's look at W, X. The slope from X to W. We'll say X to W, right? So we're going to look at the slope from X to W. Again, looking at the slope. So we're going up 1. 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. I think it moved, y'all. 2, 6. No, it didn't. 1, 2, 3, okay. Up 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we went up 2, 5, right, didn't we? So down here at Y, we're going to go up 1, 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where I think my point Z is going to be, okay? So that was this side right there, right? Notice they look parallel, don't they? Okay, so now we're going to talk about x, y. And to get from x to y, we're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So again, we're talking x to y, 5 down, and 1, 2 left, 2 left. So that's what we're going to do from w. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2 left. Hmm, look at that, we got the same point, didn't we? And the point then for z is going to be what? 0, 1. Just use your slopes, y'all. That's all you have to do. And make sure that those sides are parallel when you draw the drawing. All right, now we're going to talk about our properties, okay? So it says state the properties pertaining to sides and diagonals, how you justify these properties. Um, how will you justify these properties? Slope, Pythagorean's theorem, or midpoint formula. Okay, so we know that in a parallelogram, it's a parallelogram, right? So opposite sides, sides, are parallel, right? How do we justify that? With slope, don't we? Okay, that's how we determine if sides are parallel. Okay, then what else? Opposite sides are what? Equal, right? Sides are equal. How do we determine that? With Pythagorean's theorem. P-Y-T-H-A-G-O-R-E-A-N-T-H-M. And then, what can we say about the diagonals? Diagonals have the same midpoint, right? Diagonals have same 
midpoint. And what do we do for that? The midpoint formula, don't we? Okay, now we're going to talk about the rectangle. All of you know that rectangles have four right angles, right? So how do we say that? Consecutive sides are perpendicular, right? Now how do I prove something's perpendicular? Don't we use the slope? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then what's the other thing? Um, don't we know something about the diagonals in a rectangle, y'all? What do we know about the diagonals in a rectangle? They're equal, right? So diagonals are equal. So what do we use for that? Pythagorean's theorem again. Okay, you're noticing a pattern here? So if we're talking about um, parallel or perpendicular, we're using slope, right? If we're talking about lengths of stuff, right, then we're talking about Pythagorean's theorem. All right, rhombus. What do we know about a rhombus? Let me do a different color. Four sides are equal, right? And what do we use for that again if we're talking about lengths of things? Pythagorean's theorem again. Okay, now what else do we know about rhombus? Diagonals are what? Diagonals are perpendicular. And how do we prove that? Again, with the slope, right? Okay, we got one more. Let me see if I can find another color. We'll use green. Okay, so square. What do we know about square? It's got four equal sides, right? And how do we prove that? Pythagorean's theorem again. Anything that's a length, y'all, that's how we're going to prove it. Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, then we got um, consecutive sides or what? Are going to be perpendicular, right? That's what gives us those right angles. And that's a slope thing again. Okay? Then we have the thing about the diagonals. So we know the diagonals are what? Diagonals are, I'm going to put the symbol, perpendicular, right? And so how do we prove that? Again, slope, right? And then we can say the diagonals are also what? Equal, right? Diagonals are equal. So this is, again, Pythagorean's theorem, right? P-Y-T-H-A-G-O-R-E-A-N theorem. Got it? So, again, this is a, for the purpose of y'all studying, so use this to the best of your ability to study the properties.